Yes, eating is a behavior. Motor, muscles have to move, a thought is not a behavior. And finally, physiological, and that's where I come in. What's the physiology behind the obesity epidemic? Why do you eat too much and exercise too little? Because all behaviors have a biochemical basis. Now, sometimes we're smart enough to know what it is, and sometimes we're not smart enough to know what it is. I'll give you an example, schizophrenia. For 100 years, schizophrenia was a behavioral disorder. Now we know it's a defect in dopamine neurotransmission and probably actually a defect in glucose transport across the brain. Okay? These are biochemical problems that ultimately manifest themselves as a behavioral disorder. This is no different. So what are the biochemical underpinnings behind gluttony and sloth? That's the question. And so that's what we're going to try to answer now. So in order to answer that, you actually have to know some science. And I'm going to make this very brief and very quick. We're going to talk about these two hormones right over here called leptin and insulin. So leptin is a hormone that comes from your fat cell, goes to your brain, and tells your brain you have enough energy on board to engage in normal expensive metabolic processes, you can burn energy at a normal rate and feel good doing it. Okay? And it tells your brain you've got enough energy on board. If your leptin goes down or if your brain doesn't see your leptin, then your brain sees that as starvation. Everybody got that? Insulin is equally interesting because insulin tells your fat cell one thing. It says store energy and it tells your brain something else. It tells your brain stop. I'm in the middle of metabolizing a meal. I don't need any more. Let me deal with what I got. And so it's part of the satiety signal. So it tells your fat cell, get bigger, and it tells your brain, stop feeding your fat cell. So it's got a dichotomous role, and it's that dichotomous role that is the linchpin in terms of understanding the physiology of obesity. And I'm gonna get, oh, we're gonna go there. So here's how it works. Let's, we have to uh, explain a paradox. Here's the paradox. Who has children? Enough of you. What happens if you give a five-year-old kid a cookie? Yeah, they eat it. Yeah, I know they eat it. Yeah, what happens after that? <laughs> they bounce off walls is what they do. Ask any kindergarten teacher what happens when the cupcakes roll out for the birthday party. Okay? That's the end of the lesson. Okay? They're bouncing off walls. It's known as the sugar high. So what's going on? The fat cell gets filled with, you know, because of the cookie. The leptin goes up, tells the brain, hey, I've got extra energy on board. It tells the sympathetic nervous system, the fight or flight part of the nervous system that innervates your muscles and innervates your fat cells, hey, I got too much energy. So what happens? You burn it off. So the sympathetic nervous system tone to the muscles give you the fidgeting, and the sympathetic nervous system tone to the fat cells releases the extra fat and then that, that gets used for energy later. And so this is a nice negative feedback pathway that keeps you in energy balance as long as your brain can see its leptin. So far, so good. So here's the paradox. What happens if you give an obese five-year-old kid a cookie instead? They're in the pantry looking for more cookies. Anybody ever see a sugar high in an obese kid? Doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. And that's why they're obese, is because they don't get the sugar high, because they can't see their leptin. Because if they could see their leptin, they'd have a sugar high. But they don't. That's the point. So something's blocking that leptin signal. That's the paradox. And the question what is, what is it? So we learned about leptin from this patient over here. Okay? This is the OB, OB mouse, the leptin deficient mouse, who has a gene defect in the leptin gene. So this animal's leptin is zero. So his brain thinks he's starving all the time. So he'll eat anything in sight. Not only will he eat anything in sight, but this animal is the ultimate couch potato because his brain can't see his leptin, so he thinks he's starving, so he doesn't want to burn energy. He wants to store it. So the only reason this animal ever gets off his hiney is if you put the food on the other side of the cage, then they'll waddle over to that, sit down, eat it there, and stay there instead. Okay, everybody got it? Now, the reason? Because leptin tells the hypothalamus that you've got the energy to burn. So if the hypothalamus sees the leptin signal, then this diamond over here gets uh, activated. Anorexigenesis, that is, I'm not hungry, I don't need any more, and I can burn energy effectively. And so it tells the sympathetic nervous system to turn on to fidget and to release fat from the fat cell. And it tells the vagus nerve, the energy storage nerve, hey, I'm not hungry, appetite down, and stop releasing insulin. Everybody with me? Conversely, if the leptin doesn't reach the hypothalamus because there's a gene deletion or because there's something blocking it, then you get this diamond instead. 
which is orexigenesis. I'm hungry. I need more food because I'm starving. And because I'm starving, I'm going to try to conserve. And so that means your sympathetic nervous system tone goes down, which means you sit on a log. And your vagus nerve goes up to increase your appetite so that you'll generate more calories in order to put more into the fat cells to try to get more of a leptin signal. Everybody with me? And that, this is that same negative feedback pathway I showed you before. It's now schematized. Okay. And there are leptin deficient people, 14 at last count, 14. And they're all of consanguineous marriages, and they're all of Pakistani or Turkish ancestry. And when they're born, they're perfectly normal weight. And by age six months, they're already massively obese because their brain is constantly starving. It doesn't matter how much weight they gain, their brain can't see it because it ain't there, because they have a leptin gene defect. So here's a patient, 220 pounds by age nine. Okay? But you start giving them shots of leptin every day, and look what happens. They lose weight on a dime. And it's all fat mass that they're losing, too. Hormone replacement therapy, because now their brain can see leptin because we're giving it to them from a bottle instead of from their own fat cell. Hormone replacement therapy, that's what I do as an endocrinologist. That's my job. And here's an example. Here's the patient at three and a half years of age, looking pretty awful. And here's after a shot of leptin every day for four years, indistinguishable from normal, because we fixed the problem. Great, right, for those 14 people. The problem is the rest of us are not leptin deficient. The rest of us are leptin resistant. We got boatloads of leptin, and the leptin correlates with how much body fat we have. But if our brain could see that leptin, we wouldn't be obese because we'd burn it off in the sugar high, right? Everybody got it? So there's something blocking that signaling right there, that X. That's the holy grail of obesity right there. What is blocking leptin from working? Because if, you can't, if your hypothalamus can't see it, then you're in this box over here, and you can see things just go in the wrong direction, and there's your gluttony, and there's your sloth. 